So I have a question for the line professionals here. When was our first PSPS here in Pollock Pines? Shutting off power in this area during extreme weather is not just a safety issue. And so I just want to ask you guys, what is it like to be in that situation? So I can speak on that. Please. <laughs> Worst day I've had in history. As PG&E's new CEO, Patty Poppy, is hearing from her crews, it's also a very emotional issue for those affected. It's, it's hard to do, to tell your neighbors. It's hard to explain. You live here, right? I mean, you live with your customers, and to have to explain that we have to withhold power. This is one way PG&E is trying to minimize the impact on the people they serve. These boxes are part of what's called a microgrid. It'll be critical for the town of Pollock Pines when the power shut off. Poppy is not used to cutting power. She ran a utility in Michigan where that was never an issue. But here, during extremely windy, dry, and warm conditions, PG&E has repeatedly shut off power to hundreds of thousands of customers across hundreds of miles to prevent its equipment from starting a wildfire. One of the questions that we hear a lot is, is this really gonna take 10 years before we're not having to shut the power off when it gets really windy? Our standards have changed and we are rebuilding the entire system in our high fire threat district areas. That will take some time. So we're going to continue doing the vegetation management using the best technologies to harden the system. The power shutoffs have left some customers in the dark for days. Some restaurants have lost all their food and business during those events. That's like our last line of defense. It's the thing furthest out there that we have to use as our backstop. It will be our ambition to make our public safety power shutoffs less visible, less intrusive. So back to one way that would work with microgrids like the one in Pollock Pines, where a generator and transformer send power to underground wires. This particular system can keep 63 critical and community services running in the downtown corridor. So the point of the microgrid is really to keep all of this on. All of this. Yes, from the gas station all the way down to that Red Cross, the church that serves as a Red Cross yeah. hub, including the fire station. All of these fundamental services are available then during a public safety power shutoff. And while the microgrids create small islands where the lights stay on, PG&E is also adding equipment to some power lines that can limit a shutoff to a smaller area, dramatically reducing the number of people who lose power. You know, all of these places that... Poppy has already witnessed a public safety power shutoff. It was in January, just days after she started her new job. What I saw was the technology deployed to understand the exact and pinpoint the exact factors that are driving the need and where we need to shut off the power. Fuel source, the wind speeds. We have professional uh, scientists on staff who study weather and wind conditions. They're making sure it's safe. They're helping make sure that we know and can pinpoint exactly the factors that cause us to shut off that power. Shutting off power for people's safety is the hardest decision that we make. But we will make it to keep people safe. Poppy says the root of the problem is climate change. Conditions that may have caused smaller problems a decade ago are now much more likely to trigger massive fires. She says that's the real challenge that drew her to the embattled utility. I believe California is leading the battle on climate change. Both the symptoms of climate change and the ambition to thwart it, not just adapt, but stop it. And to come and be part of that is a, a full utilization of all of my experience. I am prepared for such a time as this, and I feel blessed to be the one able to lead us through this next chapter.